you would introduce me. Let me start again. I don't know how I'll introduce you. Kyle is a friend that uh, I never knew I had. <laughs> so hold on. So if you've seen his picture, the first thing you should notice is he doesn't need any words to introduce himself. Take a look at the site and look at his head exposed. So I think this is his natural state. Just open it up and see. He's the one with the really cool picture on, on his bio. But yeah, we know him as a freaking genius, right? Freak of genius? Freak of oh my gosh, I just got it wrong. So I've, I've been mispronouncing the whole time. <laughs> so this is a company that basically takes creativity and, bring, and puts it in the hands of millions of people via really cool apps. I really hope you get a chance to demo it. I think he's shown you a few of you already. But uh, thank you for staying for the last talk here. I uh, really do appreciate that. Um, he, one of the fun facts, he attended 14 different schools. I'm sure he's had a few little mishaps and misadventures in the time frame. I hope he shares some of these too. So Kyle is also a sandboxer, which I first met him through. It's a global organization of under 30s change makers. So not just creative and uh, successful CEO, but he's also, you know, helping change the world. All right, with that, bring it over to Kyle. One more time. Thanks, man. <laughs> cool. Thanks you guys for sticking around. This is a, definitely a brain full. Um, so I just wanted to uh, share a little bit of this thing that's been clawing at the back of my mind. Um, last September, I was living in New York for about a month, um, if, given that I was fundraising for my, my startup. And I knew that I was gonna be there. I had dubbed my trip as being a rampage tour. No idea what it meant. I just knew that I wanted to create havoc. And so that meant looking for any and every opportunity and trying to exploit it and building this big echo chamber and a lot of momentum so that you know I can move quickly, close some money back for the company, get focused back on the product. Weird things started to occur once you start looking and digging for opportunities. I ended up sneaking into the dressing room of Richard Branson uh, while he was in there and um, uh, having a, like a master's class and brunch with uh, the Archbishop Desmond Tutu, uh, tagging Mark Echo, the clothing designer's uh, building, and Twitter bombing him until we got a, a little face-to-face -face meeting with him. Just all sorts of weird, random things just, just started to, uh, to happen. And I spent a lot of time walking the streets of New York and just thinking like, I know I'm here building momentum, you know, but I'm like, what is momentum? Like, wh how do I, I know it when I feel it. I know it when I see it. But how do I optimize for it? How do I, you know, really start to construct my, my experience and be in, intentional? And I, what I like about this whole weekend um, and today and all these speakers is the theme about mindfulness and intention. And what starts to happen when you put a language to, um, to what you're trying to do? And I think that the point of this today is going to be all about, you know, starting at the core and having that, that mindfulness. So, momentum. Um, this is kind of how I've seen momentum working. There's this, there's this energy that you, you try to put one thing in and hopefully 1.1 1 .1 or above happens and it, it moves forward at a rate which accelerates and although this energy bar has a, has a cap, you know, momentum continue, can continue to build. Um, you also have this opposing force, this resistance that, you know, when bad things go uh, in and against, your momentum, it could start to suck it out of the room and even create an inverse momentum. So we'll get to that. So let's look at high level, with our friends outside, um, <laughs> what, uh, what momentum is. And think of it as there's a triangle. And on each tip, each bucket, these are the three pieces that make up momentum. You're going to have things like information, mass, and velocity. These are just the three components that makes up momentum. Okay? To be more specific, you have the consumption of information, the creation of mass, and velocity through communication. The three C's of momentum. No, so consumption, creation, and communication. Okay? Simple. Still with me? Yeah. Awesome. Let's start with information. Now, this is what we consume. This is what we take in. As human beings, we are built to consume, right? We have six senses that allow us to 
uh, to perceive and to sense and to take in, whether it's the art that we're looking at or the music we're listening to, the food that we smell, um, taste, touch, scent, like feel, that sense. We are built to consume and to take in, and our economy and our culture is built around our ability to consume. In fact, we're led to believe that the act of consumption is what is valuable. Now, if you just get stuck in that mode of consumption and you are skewed so far towards consumption, you're gonna just get fat and die. You know, just completely internally overwhelmed with information. With, we consume for, for three reasons. One is to be inspired, to learn, or to tune out, and I'm talking about in the mind here, to tune out, turn off that, that, that consciousness, okay? Now, it's a really important place to start, but it's important to know that while you're going through and you're flipping, say you're watching that Upworthy video and you feel so good and you feel so inspired and wow, I wanna do that again, next. Wow, I wanna do that again, next. You're flipping through your social media stream and like you just feel good all the time and you just wanna keep consuming and consuming. Being inspired or feeling good is not good enough. Okay? The most important part is to switch gears. You get that spark of inspiration, you switch gears. Switch to the creation of mass. This is what I call the creation of original wealth. What is tangible, that, that mode of alchemy, where you create something tangible from nothing, this transference of energy. Now, what this is, is this is the art and the music and the literature, the food, the furniture and products. These are things that didn't previously exist that you built that is yours, that you get to transfer and create wealth for yourself, okay? Now, um, one of the biggest things to know is if you didn't make it, it's not really yours. This is uh, Tim the Toolman Taylor from Home Improvement. Heard it when I was in fifth grade, stuck with me ever since. Um, so now I've spent a lot of time thinking about product as mass. In my world, I build product. So, a product is mass, okay? It's this tangible thing, as we've just determined. It's not just anything, though. You have to build the right thing for the right audience at the right time. So just because you came up with that spark of inspiration doesn't mean you silo yourself and build this thing until it's done. You have to have this, this relationship now back with consumption. So you go into this mode, and this is what we have lean methodologies built around this, this great philosophy of you build and you learn and you build and you learn, and so you know that you're building the right thing for the right audience and paying attention to the market so you're at the right time, okay? But a product can also have mass. This, in a product state, is its users, its customers, how much they're using it, do they come back and use it again, does it make any money, this is that traction, the proof that the thing that you built is actually interesting. So going back to fundraising, I was fundraising telling this amazingly story of why I'm driven to do what we're doing and the team that can build it and the thing that we're doing, building up a ton of momentum and interest. I mean, in fact, we went from zero to $2.7 million of investors interested in trying to help bring this to light. And then comes the question of like, oh, is anybody using this yet? Are they coming back to it yet? Have they spent any money on it yet? Like those questions of the traction and the proof. And I'm like, but, but, but the vision, the vision, right? The, the proof is actually worth more than the thing that you're creating, okay? So now we've determined that a product is mass and it can have mass, but it also can create mass, okay? So a camera, for example, is mass. But every time it snaps a photo, that is a new tangible object that didn't previously exist that could be potentially more impactful and more valuable than the camera itself. And especially once that, that photo has a watermark on it and someone looks at it like, wow, where did you, oh, oh, that Kodak camera. I wanna go get one of those. And so you start to create this interesting loop, okay? Now going in to the imbalance of mass, the imbalance of creation. Some people are really good at making things. I'm really good at making things. So I've fallen into this trap of like, build and build and build, and you start to get excited, and like, I'm gonna build this amazing ship, and you get it all built, and like, oh, I'm gonna put it in the world, and this is how it's gonna change the world, and you build it up to the dock, and then you let go, and it's 
dead in the water. There's no wind that had been drummed up and put in the sails of this amazing piece of mass that you had spent all this time and energy building. So the next important piece is you need that velocity. This is the communication that puts the wind in the sails of the beautiful thing that you've created. Okay? Now, this is evangelizing, pitching, storytelling, talking, sharing, just communication. This is the wind. Okay? Now, you have, right now, I'm in this mode of communication, and you're sitting there, and you're consuming what I'm saying. Now, maybe with one or two of you, you get really excited about something that happened over the course of this day, and you turn around, and you now switch modes from consumption to communication to your audience. Because you want to pass it on and inspire or educate them. But what you're doing is actually creating value for me or the originator of the content of the mass. So going through social media, when you're flipping through, every time you hit comment or share or like, you're, you're helping create visibility for the originator of the content. Which if you're conscious of, I want to help create momentum and energy and velocity for somebody who I believe in or... Um, I'm doing it because I want to educate and inspire my audience, you know, what value am I providing? But you're providing value for somebody else, okay? Now, this is why it's really important to build a core community. People that believe in you. People that want to see you succeed. Because you might not have necessarily built the right thing at the right time for the right audience at the beginning, likely that you didn't. But when somebody believes in you, they're willing to share something, to help create a little bit of velocity and momentum for you to see you succeed. There's a couple rules though. You have to give more than you ask for. You have those friends in your feeds that are constantly like, here's this thing I did, here's this thing I did, help me do this, help me do that. You do it a couple times and you start to get burnt. Okay? So what can you do for your audience and your community because you want to actually see them rise up? So it's this whole ecosystem. Back to the imbalance. I call this the imbalance in velocity. You see a lot of salesmen in this position where they're really good at selling every single ticket to the, to the show where the show itself becomes the product. And they build up all of this enormous excitement and energy and they peel back the curtain and there's just little tiny things standing on there. You're like, really? That's it? Now with Expectations, this is the bar of expectation. And the more velocity that you put into that bar, you raise up the expectation, and anything that falls below it is gonna leave someone disappointed, or angry, or upset, or confused, or they're gonna question things. And any of those things that starts to happen, it sucks the energy out of the room. So you need to be extremely aware as to how much anticipation you build that is in relation to the actual thing you've created. Now. You can talk about it in such a way of like, hey, check out what we have today. This is what the future looks like. How do you have them dream and be inspired with you, but have the right expectation or even the over promise, under deliver, under deliver to where it's actually better than the way that you just talked about it and it goes above that BR, uh, above that bar, excuse me, where they get excited and now they want to help share, help be a part of your velocity going back to this bar. So this is that resistance. These are the negative things that ends up happening. Whether time is working against you, or you have critical people who speak negatively about you, your competition is bigger, scarier, faster, smarter. Um, if you have a broken product or you've just violated trust, it's gonna suck the energy out of the room, which is why it's extremely important to put positive things out. Whether it's for yourself or whether it's for other people if you provide positivity, we should all be pushing each other's momentum forward. Okay? Now I like to think of this. So if I had a baseball, and this is my thing that I had made, and if I were to chuck it and it would have hit you in the head, you're going to feel it. You're like, ow, you notice it. You know, give it a couple minutes and it kind of goes away. But if I take that same ball and I dip it into this like vat of really goopy weird stuff and maybe spray some patchouli on it and you know and then I throw it and it smacks you in the side of the head and then it starts like smearing down it gets stuck in the beard for all the women out there and 
you just are stuck with this smell and this feeling and the sensation, like how much longer is that going to stick with you, right? How much longer are you going to remember that? Now that sticky, goopy stuff, that's the personal story. That's the narrative. That's the something that we can all connect with and empathize with. So when you're, when you're telling your story and of selling your product or whatever it is that you're doing, it's a human story. It's why they care about it, what it's solving for them, that, that fear, that anxiety, whatever it is, you connect to them through a personal narrative. Now, if you were to step back and you look at, at any given time you're in one of these three modes. Now, switching gears between these three modes, that's where the distraction happens. It's, each one has its own flywheel. If I'm in the mode of creation, and we just heard a great talk upstairs about this, if we are in that mode of creating, um, and all of a sudden you get that email that pops up, and you're like, oh, okay, let me just go over here. You just go from like, oh, I gotta consume this, and now I gotta communicate back to it, and then I gotta go back to creating here, and then you get the social media, and you're in this constant state of switching gears. You don't have a chance to ever focus, to, to peel back the layers and really get to the, to the genius of your work. You know, the, the place that is, that's that aha moment. You know, that's not ever gonna come on a very surface level. And so what I found is simply by isolating myself into the, I'm in this specific mode, I turn off all of this stuff. And I've, I've been able to, to stay more focused and be more productive until I know that I'm reaching a challenge or I need some more inspiration. And then I will specifically time box my consumption to go into, you know, to tuning out, to letting my conscious problem kind of dip back to the subconscious and see what can solve back there, and then I'll come back to it. You know, and this, this constant mode, and if you think about team building and complementary skill sets. So on, on a product side, I, can, I need a, a front-end developer and a back-end developer and a designer, and you know, between these three, we can build something great. But at the same time, who can be out there doing customer development, asking questions, learning are we building the right thing. Take that, that input, turn it into data to affect this bucket, while this person's out there and kind of building that, that momentum or that velocity so that it all comes together and then it's off to the races and hopefully that's that right burst to push it forward. Now, as I've started to think more about this, this beautiful resource came across my way just over a week and a half ago and it, it's put a lot of really interesting brain science mixed with this cool narrative to, to this idea of um, optimizing attention and just understanding the way the brain works. And I will say that it is easily gonna be one of the top three most powerful books you read this year if you haven't read already. And it's, it's not just neuroscience and brainy stuff, but it's written in such a way that A, I can understand it, um, but also um, through two people's journeys, and this is what life looks like before, and this is like what life looks like after. And he tackles some really interesting things that we all deal with every single day. So I don't know that I would call this a challenge over the next 30 days, but read the book if you can. <laughs> Just read the book. I would say that my challenge to you is this, this collection of momentum, putting yourself in a frame frame of mind to where you, you step back and you say, what am I doing right now and why am I doing it? Now, the first thing that I did, this, this book captures two sides of it for me. And it was inspired by Jim Henson's uh, Muppet book where there's a new book that uh, it's called The Imagination Illustrated. And at 30 years old, Jim Henson stopped and he knew that so much was happening in his life that he wasn't gonna be able to remember so he reflected on the previous 10 years and just tried to remember when something meaningful or impactful would happen that was a milestone in his life. And then each year forward would just do a quick recap. Now I went through and I started at 2004 and there were a couple. In 2005 there was probably you know four or five. In 2008 there may have been 10. And I'm at 2013 and there's, even, there's over 150 milestones and it's growing exponentially each year. And so I now started to have a recap over what my own momentum has started to look like and start to classify, oh, this is, this is communication that has created visibility or this is something like, that I created that's tangible or 
I can start to see my own strengths in which of these three buckets, you know, where should I spend more of my time and energy? Where do I need to be stronger? Where do I need to delegate? Um, and the other thing that I do is, uh, as I get to the end of my day, I'll take a couple quick notes. What did my day consist of? How much of it was through consuming? How much of it was through communication? And how much of it was creation? And then you get a little bit of a snapshot and you can be like, wow, I'm spending way too much time consuming. I need to be more on the creating. And you know, it's all about action and intention. Um, so this is where you capture, you record, and talk about it. These are the three buckets of, of momentum. Create your own narrative and understanding of who you are and connect with somebody on it, inspire them, and get them to talk about it. You know, start that flywheel. Everybody is dealing with it at any given time. Any organization is dealing with it, any capacity. And you can even hijack other people's momentum by being a part of their story somehow. A lot of people right now, are their momentum is being built off of the Seahawks' momentum. Each thing that they create, each photo that they put out there, people are already excited about it because they're already excited about something bigger than all of them individually, right? This is a peak of momentum for Seattle. You feel it walking down the street. Um, and with that, go Hawks. <laughs> Thank you, Kyle. Wow. OK, I love that as a close. So I wish we could segue right into close and have that momentum, but we have to wait for the folks upstairs.